Hey guys, and welcome to the Soap Sanctuary along with Albert Bostic. This is our Jay's Top 3 couple. Yes, yes, let's do it. Let's get right into it. I'm excited to do this. We've been trying to do this for a long time, actually. <laughs> but you know, life and everything like that just kind of gets in the way a little bit. I think we were actually planning on doing this like maybe a couple weeks ago or a month yeah, ago. I think, actually, I think almost a month later now, almost a month. Later. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So almost a month later, we, we finally got this in, guys. We're going to be going over our top three uh, days couple. So me and Albert have each picked our own. So he has his three, and I have my three. And we're going to go over them. Now, I'm going to let Albert start off. We might have some matching on our list, but I'm going to let Albert start off with his top three, starting from number three and then downwards. Yeah. So my third favorite couple is going to be Ben and Ciara. Okay. And that's sort of the same thing, you know, because we talked about this before. So yeah, we did, we did, we did. Yeah, they're, they're, they're my number three, too, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you want to go first as far as your, you know, why you picked them third, or you want me to go first? Uh, You know, okay, I'll go first. I'll go to up first. Why not? Right. I would say I chose them because they, they bring something different to days. They're really... Because I feel like most super couples back in the day had this, it wasn't love, just like they fell in love. There was some, like, dynamic against them. And with Ben, it's because he's an ex-serial killer. <laughs> so I think that's part of the dynamic. But honestly, it's weird that I find myself rooting for this couple despite all of that in the background with Ben's history. So um, I don't know. I, I just I, I feel drawn to them. Honestly, it's it's just really hard to say. You really I, I find myself rooting for Ben and Sierra uh, despite his history. What about for you? For me, I look at it because I didn't see a thing. Like I didn't really watch them that long. But what I do appreciate about them, which I don't appreciate a lot, is their ride or die attitude. Like I heard that Sierra you know, saved Ben's life when he was about to be, you know, executed and stuff like that. Like, she held a guard. Yeah. She came in there and, like, what did she do? Did she, um, like, pull somebody hostage or whatever? Or she got, somehow she was able to sit there and save him. I don't like, remember the, the details of what Didn't he hold her hostage? No, no, no. Well, yeah, later on, but it was definitely <laughs> he was going to get executed, and she had to do stuff inside, kind of get him out of it or whatever. And I just love that ride or die attitude. Right, like, right. They do each other no matter what, you know. Like they're willing to literally risk their lives to, you know, each other's life to, like, you know, save one another. You know? Right, right. And you know, I think the writers, I did like that they didn't try to like wash away Ben's behavior with a brain tumor. Uh, like they did with Franco and GH. <laughs> they made him face the music, but I do feel like they had to bring back Will Horton in order for us to digest Ben. <laughs> you know? They had to bring Will back from the dead. They just had to. I think that was the only way that we were going to be able to properly digest him being a redeemed character. Yes. Yeah, um, like I said, I don't really like them too much because of the whole PDA thing, but I do love the, the ride or die attitude and the fact that they're like damn nearly psychically linked, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. They have that whole Bo and Hope, John and Marlena. Like, I really do feel like they have the essence of like a modern day soap super couple. Yes. Honestly, which we don't see a lot in couples these days on soap, but I feel like they, they've got that for some reason. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the, the writing is definitely on the wall for them. Now, let me, let's move into now to our number two. What was yours? Before I say mine, I don't know what was yours. Yeah, mine was Xander and Gwen was my number two. Why them? Because they accept each other's flaws. You know? Right. You know that they're, you know, they, they've been through a lot. And... You know, regardless of the situation or whatever, like, they can sit there and appreciate each other. Especially, like, I like Gwen with Xander better than Sarah. Because Sarah was always meant to be trying to change him. Yeah. And Gwen just kind of accepts him for who he is. Right, right. It's like they get to be exactly who they are with one another. It's almost like with Gabby and Jake, where they're both kind of diabolical, manipulative, 
and they yeah. both like accept. But see, this is this is my only issue with Xander and Gwen though is that I feel like Gwen is still doing stupid stuff to hold on to him, whereas like Gabby is doing stupid stuff with Jake. <laughs> that is true. That is true. You know, it's like Gabby and Jacob are accepted that we're both manipulative, we're both diabolical, but we don't need to do stupid stuff to keep each other. I mean, with the Joe Devil, Joe Devil storyline, though, we're going to have to see how that pans out. But for the most part, they do, like, manipulative and diabolical stuff with each other. Yeah. You know? That, that, that's the one thing I, I have to say, because with Gwen, I, I want to like her so badly. I really want to. I wanted to. <laughs> but she just, she makes it so hard for me. To want to, to just to, to like her, she just makes it so hard. It's like every time I think she's gonna get smarter, she doesn't. Well, yeah, I mean, she's had that flaw for quite a while, so right. I don't think that's getting any better. I mean, you had to do the whole doctor thing, and the doctor was meant to have blackmailing her, and it was like you could just tell the truth and kind of just dealt with it, but yet you decide to get blackmailed because reasons, because that's right, like, right. And then now with the whole working with Kristen and Mayor, I'm like, how far do you think this is going to go? Like, you're always going to be under Kristen's thumb at this point. Yeah, I mean, especially the whole jail thing, because, you know, once they find out that you're behind it, well, not only can you kiss him goodbye, you can probably kiss your freedom goodbye again, but whatever. And her, Yeah, and then her relationship with Jack. And see, this is my thing with Gabby. It's like, she's a villain, but I feel like she's a smart villain. Like, I feel like ever since the whole Nick Fallon thing, she's learned her lesson. <laughs> she's learned her lesson on how to be a smart villain because I, 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 were you watching Days at that time when Nick fell down the river? No. It was it was Sammy, Kate, and Gabby, and they all basically let Nick slide down the river. And that's why Gabby and Julie always had this feud with one another because she felt like, you know, she killed Julie's grandson or whatever or whatever. But Nick, was, Nick was a total a-hole back then, though. But he fell down the river, and because um, I think Nick was blackmailing Will because he wanted to be Ariana's father, and he was just, they really transformed his character because Nick was really this nerdy guy. And then when, I don't know what happened, they transformed him to this, like, this really homophobic character and just controlling with Gabby. Was and then... Because I know at one point he was in jail, right? Yeah, he wasn't. Yeah, he was in jail. I think it was for the murder of Trent Scott or something, which was Melanie's father before they retconned it and made Daniel Jonas her father. But that's a long story for another day. And then he got out of jail, and then he got his life back together, and that's when him and Gabby fell in love, um, or something like that. And yeah, and but see, ever since then, I feel like Gabby learned her lesson. She became a smarter villain. She became smarter. Where it's like, okay, she knew she always had to get a man that was on her side. And this is why I do believe that her and Jake will have a Tamara child at some point. I'm seeing it happening. Mm, okay. I see it happening at some point. Well, and that's the thing. Like, when I came in, I came in, that's when Gabby was, like, you know, thinking that Jake was um, Stefano. Oh, wow. I came in around that. Yeah, I came in around that time. So all that other stuff, like, yeah, I was not around for that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. Okay, so okay, I I get I, I get it now. I get now. I get the point of reference now for you were starting with these. I get the point of reference now for that. <laughs> I got the point of reference now for that. Um, are you ready for my number two? Yeah. Okay, so my number two is, and this is one character I know you just don't do not like, but you got to tell me why you don't like. Her. I want to know the breakdown why I don't like this character. My number two is Allie and Trip. They are my number two. <laughs> Tell me why you don't like Allie. Like, what is up with Allie's character you just don't like about her? She's very ditzy. I think that's when it really comes down to her. She's just very ditzy and just, um, and ditzy. Right. There's more to it. And she's also very childish a little bit, too. But she's just more of the ditzy that just bothers me. Right, right. always like, poor Allie, this, like, it just, I can't Like, kind of naive? Really yeah. Well, it's not so much naive. It's just like when people were sitting there trying to help her, like when Marlene was sitting there trying to help her, like she snapped at her a couple of times and it was like trying to talk to her was like trying to walk on eggshells. Right, right. Like, you know, to sit there and have a serious conversation with her without her being super sensitive about that. Right, right. I mean, looking at it with Allie, 
it, it's weird because I, I I do like her and Chip together all at the same time. So like if I was Chip, I don't know that I would be with Allie. Um, yeah. Just because, and I understand she thought it was Trip, but the thing about it is I kind of knew when she accused Trip that the person was going to be related to Trip. I could just feel it. But I thought it was going to be somebody who looked exactly like Trip. And uh, him and Charlie, but, but then again, I get it because he was the last, she, she, he, he was the last person that she remembered seeing um, at that time. So, I, okay, I, 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 can, I can get that part. But it's just like, you know, the, she really almost ruined his life in Salem. And that's the part that pissed me off. That's the part that just is, like, I get it. But at the same time, it's like she wasn't even too sure. She wasn't even 100% sure. Right. So she was people talking to Steve or whatever, and Steve was like, he was asking a question. She seemed like she was confused like she wasn't 100 percent sure and i'm like when you're dealing with somebody's life like that you better be sure <laughs> it gave me flashbacks to christina and Kiefer on gh and when ethan got accused i i was i know this is so off topic that story but that no, no. no. that pissed me off for days that story I, like it, it made me so angry and sunny was just so impulsive ready to shoot him it, and then christine just kept like i feel like christina could have could have blamed on any random person at her school you know and again this is a soap this is part of the storyline but it just so bothered me like but you know why she you know why she did that though right with with ethan as opposed to anyone else because she knew that you know luke or whatever like he wouldn't go he wouldn't kill him because right of so right that's why she did it and granted, I'm not meant to make an excuse for it because it, it pissed me off as well. But I understood why she went there. It just, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I totally get it. Yeah, that storyline, I mean, Sonny was getting ready to blow his brains out. Just like when Sonny thought AJ killed Connie, he was getting ready to shoot him too. It was more for Michael stepping in, you know. But then I think later on the line, he did kill AJ. But anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave it on days here for a second. Um, and Ali and Trip. I mean, I I, I like them. I, I do like them together. And I and I guess honestly, now thinking about it, I think I want to change that on my list. I want to change that to Ali and Chanel instead, um, just because we all know that Trip is gonna be the odd man out pretty soon. Um, I do believe that Ava is gonna come after Ali because she's already feeling like she was jilted by race. And not knowing that her son, the son she had with her precious patch, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> was jilted by Allie. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, and on top of that, she's going behind his back. And it's not one of those things where it's like, all right, she was drunk or whatever. Yeah. Like, no, she was fully sober when she decided to get in bed with her and do yada, yada, yada. And, yeah, I'm just not a fan of her, but... Like when, 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 when Ava said, I swear of my son, and they showed Charlie's grave, I was like, well, damn. <laughs> I swear of my son, I, I do nothing to, to the rape. I was like, well, damn. <laughs> we're still on number two, right? Yeah, we're still on number two. We're still on number two. We're still on number two. Okay, so. Do you, you have something else you want to add? No, 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 no. no okay, so. What is your number one? I have it here, but just to tell everybody who's watching, obviously. My number one is going to be Doug and Joy. Okay, tell me why. No, because they stood the test of time. Throughout everything that they had in their lives, ups and downs and probably breakups and whatever, they were still together. Right. Throughout everything, everything that happened, they were still together. And it... it like, I always sit there and I always admired a couple, any couples in real life that are still together for X amount of years. Right. Because of life and everything like that that gets in the way, and yet they still find a way to be true to themselves and to learn and to grow together. Right, right. Crazy thing is they're actually a real-life couple, too. But they are. Yeah, they're a real-life couple. So they literally, as long as they've been on the show, as long as they're actually married in real life. Oh, wow. Definitely. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I can see why you picked them, because I definitely think that chemistry on screen, it translates, um, knowing that they're a real-life couple, too. Um, and I'm surprised that they're in Hollywood, they managed to go just that long and be on screen like that. Um, 
to make that work. Only thing is, I don't like how sanctimonious Julie can be at times, but I, I could I could see why you picked them. I could see why. Uh, and and trust me, and like I said, there's a lot of times where Julie would just annoy the living hell out of me, but then there's also times when she would sit there and give like wisdom and stuff like that. So she's a very complicated character for me. Right, right. I think the one thing for me is I remember the time when Nick was blackmailing Will, and after. Nick died. It's almost like she forgot Will was her family too. The Will was a whore, and that bothered me at that time. But honestly, I think that the writers realized like Julie's clearly the new matriarch of the Hortons because now Alice is no longer there anymore, and Alice was the matriarch prior. So it makes sense they put her in that role. And I, I honestly liked how. And this is one thing I have to just say for the testament of writers on days how they can write for the older characters without it being cheesy or anything. Like for for example, the possession storyline. We literally thought we were getting an Alzheimer's storyline with Doug. Yes. And it was like, er, no. <laughs> but you know what? They, they did the Alzheimer's thing more with G.H., so I felt like maybe they just was like, no, we're going to just do a different route. Right, right, right. Which would make sense because, I mean, like, Y&R had already done it. Like, literally, Y&R and G.H. did the Alzheimer's storyline at the same exact time. Which I find to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, Jack's mom was having Alzheimer's, and Mike had Alzheimer's on GH, and then both their characters also happened to die at the same time. <laughs> so it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tend to notice that sometimes on soaps will have certain storylines that will be occurring on different shows at the same time. Makes you wonder, like, who compared notes with the writers and stuff. But, I mean, with that storyline, I thought that was genius, that the way they included Doug and Julie in that, you know what I'm saying? Because I understand, obviously, the older actors, there's probably a lot as much scenes and stuff they might not be able to do as time goes on with age. But I like that they were able to be incorporated in that storyline, honestly. I also like how they balance each other out. That's something else yeah. about Doug and Julie. It's like, Julie is, like, very, like, impulsive. It's like, she's very, like, Doug is, like, the center. You know, he's the person that will sit there and kind of rein her in or calm her down or whatever. Yeah. And they work together like that. You know, she could be very impulsive, but that can be kind of a good thing, and Doug is more reserved. So I do like the dynamic a lot. Yeah, and, and, and it balances each other out. So it's like, and I, and I like that, that that maternal figure she gets to be, that grandmother figure she gets to be for CR when she's technically CR's aunt. <laughs> because Julie is biologically Hope's sister. And I think Doug was her stepfather at one point in time. Oh, okay. And that was a storyline back then at that time. Yeah, it, it was something like that because I know she is she's she's Hope's sister. I know that much. She's definitely Hope's sister. And Doug is Hope's father biologically. Doug is Hope. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, because it, it made it seem like they were like Hope's grandparents or something or you know whatever. But like no, so Doug is is, is Hope's dad, and then Julie is her sister. And then I guess after their mom, Addie, died, Julie got with Doug, and it was seen as weird to the town of Salem for a little bit, but people got over it. Okay. Yeah, so that's... Uh, that's <laughs> not like the whole crazy kissing and cutting thing on that other show, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's why a lot of times, I mean, people just... Sierra just calls her Grandma Julie, which kind of makes sense. I mean, she's just kind of in the grandma role, so let's just, like, put her in that. But, but she's technically Sierra's aunt. <laughs> It's all technicality, so yeah. Okay. Anything else you want to add to Jogging? Um. Okay, I guess I guess I'll go into my number one then, if you're ready for that. Um, with my number one, I gave my number one spot to Will and Sonny. I gave them a number one spot because honestly, I hadn't seen a younger couple written with as much intensity as it was with Will and Sonny because it wasn't just like, okay, they were characters, they were gay, they're just going to be in the show, whatever. They gave them a lot of meat as characters. I think, I, were you watching the time when Will came back from the dead and interrupted the wedding? No. With Paul and Sonny? When I started watching it, this was when they were... Um, Pretty much I leaving? Yeah, I was more of a GH person, so when I started watching it, this was when they thought Jake was stuffing them. And that's when they had the whole Gwen thing and Jake was trying to get out the mob and everything like that. So they had right. to Gwen. 
so yeah, that's that's pretty much where I'm at. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So I, I guess I guess the gist of the backstory with those two then is that obviously Will and Sonny came out to each other, blah blah blah, and then obviously they got married. And then Will was killed by Ben. He was strangled by Ben. He found out Ben was the necktie killer. Ben strangled him, and then uh, Sonny went on to be with Paul. And they found out that Will was still alive. That he was living with Susan Banks, EJ's mother, and he his name was he thought his name was EJ at the time, and he was living somewhere in Tennessee. Yeah, that was a good story. That was a good story. <laughs> and because Rolf, Dr. Rolf had brought Will back from the dead. He injected him quickly after he got strangled, you know, so. Okay. And right. so they're <laughs> he's living in Tennessee. And they found him because Ben was in Bayview Mental Asylum. And he told, he told, he, inter he, he got out of Bayview. Like he was, I guess he was given clearance by Marlena Evans. So he went to Sonny and Paul's wedding, and then Abby and Chad were also getting married as well, so it was a double wedding. And he interrupted. He's like, Will, your husband, he's alive. He's alive. And it was like, this is a big thing. <laughs> it, was, it was a big thing. And so what happened was is that um, then they found out that Will was living in Tennessee, but Will didn't re remember who he was. So he didn't want Sonny back at all. So instead, he ended up getting with Paul instead. Because Sonny pretty much iced Paul out once he, knew, once he knew Will was still alive. And then Will was like, you know, I'd rather just be with Paul because Paul's the only person who's going to let me be who I am, which is EJ. That was his name at the time, EJ. So, <laughs> but I feel like, kind of like how you said about, like, about Doug and Julie, I feel like Will and Sonny's love, it stood the test of time on days. Um, and I'd never seen, like, a a younger a younger couple written like the way they were, like we literally saw them grow all the way up, you know, from their teen years when they were in Salem High with, with, with uh, Doug and, and, and Abby and when Chad's pregnant girlfriend was killed back in the day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got you up a lot of backstory on days. Uh, and when and Ch Chad's mom was killed off and that's when he, he found out he was a Demira, but... So we saw them go through all these different stages of their lives, and then to even see, you know, Will come back from the dead, which is like I said, I'm glad they did that because that was the only way I was gonna be okay with with that back on the screen, because that was that was the most brutal death I had ever seen on, on soaps. It was fictional, but it felt so dark. It was the darkest scene I had ever seen in the daytime, next to when Eve kidnapped Ben <laughs> during quarantine. <laughs> Yeah, Which I can't. Bl I don't blame you for that. To be honest, I don't know. I don't. I can't. I can't say I blame her for that. To be honest. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, she he killed her daughter. Yeah, I mean that was that was a that was a pretty rough strangulation there, you know. Um, but that's the thing with Sunny and Will. I like those two because I I don't know. I just like those two. They still, they still test the time. Now I know you've only seen them probably through Peacock. So what has been your take on Will and Sunny? You know, I mean, that's the problem. Like, I didn't really get to see that much of them. So, like, I would sit there and see them at a time or whatever, but it was like, it didn't really give me much. Right, so right. It like it was coming in towards the end, because by the time I started watching them more, you know, the actors were already gone. Right. You know? And I, and I think, I think, too, like, Peacock gave it, like, this comical it was very, like, we didn't get to, you, because I don't think you got to see, like, the seriousness of them as a couple. Back then, they kind of became, like, uh, you said it in your reviews. They kind of started to become, like, uh, Lucy and Anna. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you said it in one of your reviews. I saw one of your reviews today where you said it, like, how Lucy and Anna are, like, their, like, comedic relief <laughs> on their shows. Yeah. yeah. And, and all of you are, it's not so much as bad thing, but like when I was sitting there watching Lucy, I was watching her before Charles. So yeah, she had a little cookie moments, but she also had like serious moments as well. Yeah, it was a character you could take seriously. Yeah. So yeah. By, but by the time I started watching like Will and Sunny, this is when they were trying to adopt Ali's baby. So right. I didn't really get a lot of well, pretty much anything of them. And so when I found like they, they were leaving, I was like, uh, okay. But for me, it was very quick. But for you, it's probably like you've been watching it longer than I have. Right, right. I think that's one of the reasons why I was able to still take them seriously because, see, Lucy, 
like, and I know it's a quick aside because it's on another show here, but like, say, Lucy from, from GH, I had never seen her on Poor Charles. I had only seen her crazy antics on GH because I only started watching from 2006 upwards. So she came, I saw her really coming during the nurse's ball and just all the kookiness. So as a character, it's like you take them seriously, but you can't because I've never seen her in a serious moment. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, I never see her in like a serious moment. And it's kind of like that comparison you made with Lucy Anna, which that was a good comparison. I never even thought about it like that because Anna, back in the day on days, she was a really serious character. And now, yeah. I feel like she's there to be the butt of the joke every time she's on. Yeah, which is, I mean, which is actually kind of sad because, like, if you have, like, Anna fans or whatever, it's like, what happened to her? Like, why'd you do this to this character? Yeah. Or, oh, like, Scott, Scott on GH is another good example of that. Well, Scott was taken a lot more seriously than just, uh, yeah. Now he's just, like, this kooky ambulance chaser lawyer. <laughs> like, I'm like, this is, Scott has had, like, 10,000 kids on the show. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, he was on Port Charles. He had Selena. He was, you, you, you know, it was, it, it, it's, he was involved in so many storylines that it's so weird, like, what they reduced him to at this point. You know what I mean? Because at one point in time, he was like the heroine. He was like the heartthrob on GH. He was Karen's dad when she traveled back in time on Port Charles, or, or when her boyfriend traveled back in time on Port Charles, that time in the bottle storyline. That was the best. <laughs> You know, and it's just crazy what they got reduced to. Now, let me ask you this, though. What couple on days do you want to see more of? I mean, they're not on your list, but you do want to see more of them. Mm, it's tough. I mean, I feel like I missed out on a lot. Um, like, even like you said, like, Will and Sonny. I feel like I missed out on them. And now, I feel like... Chanel and Ali is kind of taking the place of Will and Sonny. Yeah. I don't know if they're just for, like, representation purposes or whatever, but I feel like they're kind of taking over. Which is fine, but they kind of did in this very sloppy way. You know? But how so? How so would you say? Because you know that, well, Trip is eventually going to break up with Ali once she finds, once he finds out that, you know, she cheated on him. Right. Just if you think about how that happened. She wasn't drunk or anything like that. Yeah, okay, you know, um, Chanel was feeling kind of bad or whatever. It was like, Chanel was like, oh, why don't you come and lay in the bed with me? It's like, what? Like, yeah. even that by itself would be like, so, you know, you know they're going to sit there and put them together, but it's going to be done in a very sloppy way. It's the same thing with Ava. I mean, it's the same thing with Nicole and Ray. Right. Yeah, they're going to put them together. They're going to sit there and do what the fans wanted. Well, let's just think, think about it. Like, how did Ray, you know, wind up being with Nicole? Because he was kind of a, a dick to, to Ava. Yeah. You know? Ava wanted to leave, and Ray begged her to stay. And then you kept Smith going behind her back, being with Nicole. And even when Ava was like, yo, listen, if you want to be with her, you can be with her. No, I want to be with you. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry that, you know, like, it didn't work out or whatever. But he was more concerned with getting out of jail rather than, you know, getting a, a sincere apology to her. Yeah. Even with, like, couples like Tony and Anna, which I'm almost surprised Tony has never had a child on this show for, like, the 80,000 years he's been on here. Like, he's, he's never had a child. I don't know why the writers never gave him one. Him and Anna don't have one. It's, like, nothing. So I would hope in these next few years they could have someone, like, resurface and say they're t Tony Long's off son. You know, even though we have already 18,000 Demeras, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what I'll say on that. That's what I'll say on that. Okay. That's what I'll say on that. So, I think we've gotten all our top three couples out the way. I think we've gotten them all the way then. Yeah. All the way a long time ago then, definitely. I mean, I think, like, honestly, I, I will say this. I think Gaze has become very – well, okay, let me ask you this. Which one do you think is a well-written show between Days and GH? Which one has better writing in your opinion? You know, honestly, to tell you the truth, I've been liking Days a lot more, which is odd because GH is, you know, that, that's my show. But there's been a lot of times I'm like, you know, Days has actually been on point. Right. And then when I sit and watch GH, I'm like, bro, come on, like, 
Jeez, you're my guy, but days you you're killing it. What what are we doing wrong? Like, can, can we get some writers? Can we fix some stuff? We, we gotta do something. Because days is, I, I honestly think days has a way of just keeping you on the edge of your seat.